The word gang has been used as a tool for suppression. For most New Zealanders, black power and the mongrel mob, hemi and hoary and leathers lurking around the mall. You heard it used in the video footage to describe Ngāti dread. We fixate on the clusters of the poor and brown in South Auckland and their alleged nefariousness, whilst blithely accepting the impacts of shulky behaviour in the financial sector. If we were to apply the law in an even-handed way, it would be the end of Rotary and Lions and the celebrated clubs run by the rich and famous. There is a racist mindset at play that feeds talkback radio and conjures populist politics. Whereas, more or less since the Second World War, sufferers in Aotearoa may have been accidentally marginalised by dint of poor, poorly thought through policies, now they are excluded from the rights of citizenship by deliberate intent. Think of the implication of the new rules around state housing, the human rights consideration of differential penalties, a doubling of sentence if you are a gang member, the reversal of the burden of proof in a gang-related crime, the wholesale tipping upside down of the presumption of innocence that has been the bedrock of jurisprudence, the move to remove the right to vote for those in prison. As a nation, our thinking has become clouded. We have commodified crime and turned the justice sector into big business. Angela Davis calls it the correctional industrial complex, the new cotton fields where the coloured poor make money for the white rich. British prison reformist Baroness Vivian Stern argues that we have converted what are essentially social problems into criminality. Whose purposes are served by the current criminal justice system in New Zealand? It doesn't do any good for Māori. Māori are more offended against than the average New Zealander and are three times more likely to be arrested and imprisoned. Māori gangs and the issues around Māori crime and the behaviours of the sufferers have simply become fodder for layers of policemen, prison warders, judges, lawyers and the myriad players in the criminal justice system. In God's own, we tend to see issues in binary form, black and white, good and bad, right and wrong. These are not dichotomies, but rather a challenging continuum of paradoxes that we need to work at collectively to resolve. The cops are asleep, I hope, so I go barefoot along the grass tracks below the church that shrine of hard work and cleanliness, and say to the moon, Mother, remember us. Heal for us what we cannot bring together, the bright and the dark, the vagrant and the Pharisee, the pa's love and the church's law. My feet are very cold. In many respects, the intimations of the current employment law and the use of unemployment and benefit entitlements have led to a reduction of the dignities traditionally associated with work and promoted one further context for the contemporary sense of slavery amongst the sufferers of Aotearoa. To some degree, as a community, we have lost the quest for money, for collective work for a communal purpose. We hold back our discretionary and voluntary effort for reciprocal exchanges beyond money. In an age of materialism, we have it in our own power to reject consumerism. One of the sad features of the current riots in London is the mad grab for material goods. Just as Hemi said, Wahinau, the void from which all life comes have given us, has given us these, three, these woven spider cages that tie together the high heads of grass, a civilization in each. A stick can rip the white silk, but that is not what I will do, having learned with manhood mercy.
if no other good, 2,000 perhaps in the tribe of Namorkai, scattered like seeds now, in the bins and in the jails, or occupied at their various occasions inside the spider cage of a common dream. Drugs, work, money. The thing that gets lost in the modern mix is the essence of humanity and the presence of God in every human being, I and I. If I should live in folly and die rewardless, nevertheless our King is great. He has pulled back the bowstring and sent his arrows flying through the world. Arrows of love. Wherever one of them strikes, that man is set on fire with love for him. My sins do not hinder the acts of his mercy. Even in my own regard, I will eat soup tonight and raw cabbage in honour of his mercy. The poorest of a myriad of servants, I live and die praising his mercy. It may bring a smile to your face to, for you to know that in London tonight, a New Zealand reggae group is playing, hosted by Nāti Rānana, called Catch a Fire. <laughs> now, despite some of my grim words, have no fear about these troubles, or the forces of mammon and the troops assembled by the pharaohs, because our bed of love is made among the lion's den. The children of Zion are shouting from their hill, whom Pharaoh cannot kill, nor the jaws of the lion. Our bed of love is made among the lion's den. So, take no shit. Use your smarts. Beat Babylon with trumpets and horns, drums and cymbals. Play your guitar or whatever instrument pleases you. Dip into the centre of your soul and find voice in poetry and song and theatre and dance. We don't want peace. We want equal rights and justice. Saul Alinsky said, you'll see it when you believe it. And I believe that we will create in Aotearoa a land where truth and justice thrive and human rights prevail. As students, you have the gift of being exposed to ideas. Some of them may be dumb ideas, some of them may be good ideas, but they are ideas nevertheless. Love is the answer to the dark voices that trouble us. When our youth is gone, saying, you fool, you have had your time and wasted it. I have seen the boulder lifted from the back of the tribe. I have heard their singing voices. I have felt their hands like the wind on the grass stroking my cheek when it seemed all hope had gone. Hallelujah. Adonai. Kia ora tate. Thank you for your attention and the dignity of your presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.